I have a confession. I'm not normal. And if you think you're off the hook, mm mm-mm, you are not normal either. (laughs) Actually, the whole way we think about normal and not normal, it's kind of a mess. I first encountered this one night with a group of other medical students when a friend of mine says, did you all know that there are people who can literally see music and color? Like, they see colors and shapes whenever they hear sounds. It's so weird. It's like their brain is tripping on acid all the time. (laughs) And I'm like, well, that's weird, because everybody can see music and colors. (laughs) I always do. (laughs) Everybody does. Right? (laughs) And he just looks at me and says, "Uh, no, that's definitely not normal. (laughs) How could I not be normal? But apparently, I'm definitely not normal. See, I have this thing that neuroscientists call synesthesia. Synesthesia is the experience of senses blending together. So someone with synesthesia might see violet whenever they hear violins, or taste vanilla whenever they see gravel, or feel velvet whenever they smell cinnamon. And there's many, many other exotic combinations, but here's the rub. If I thought I was normal when I wasn't, what about you? (laughs) Or the people sitting next to you? Who's the weirdo? (laughs) In a way, you all are. (laughs) Maybe you think you're normal when you're not. Or maybe you think you're not normal when you are. What is normal? What is it? Seriously. What if everything you've assumed about who is normal and not normal is actually not true? Which is exactly what happened in my weird case. After 14 years of being poked and prodded by scientists, I had to accept that, yeah, I'm definitely not normal. And my contention is that our labeling of who is normal and not normal alienates and divides us. And we do this based on our differences, when instead, we should regard our differences as essential for human life, as essential as a heartbeat. That's it. We're all special snowflakes, right? So why am I here? I'm a brain doctor with a brain quirk. One of the many forms of synesthesia in my brain is known as mirror touch. It's the blending of sight with touch. So for example, whenever I see someone touch the right side of your face like this, my brain makes me literally feel as though there's a hand moving down the left side of my face like this, like I'm the reflection. So seeing you with glasses here, I feel like there's glasses sitting on my nose. And you with your hand on your face, I feel like there's a hand right here. And you here with your hair, I feel like I have hair moving down the sides of my face, the same. It's really like I'm a reflection. The mirrored physical sensations can range anywhere from pleasure to pain. Mirrored touch is kind of like an automatic, very physical, super empathy. Actually, there's something I want to try out that I've never done before with 2,500 people. (laughs) Yeah, that's you. Let's play. Can we please turn the house lights up? Okay. On the count of three, run your right hand down the right side of your face like this. Okay, on three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh my God. (laughs) Uh, uh, I feel like we all just got a little closer. (laughs) The 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 feeling of a hand on on my face is something very affectionate, so thank you for the indulgence. (laughs) Oh, okay. Now, on the count of three, place your hand on your head and pat your head while rubbing your belly 
No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but it would be really funny to watch you try. Can we please turn the house lights down? Thank you. So people with synesthesia are genetically different, and their brains look and work differently compared to other people. But especially in the medical world, I decided to hide this not normal part of what makes me me, because I didn't know what would happen if I spoke openly about my synesthesia. Would people see me as diseased or delusional, a liar looking for attention, or think that I'm claiming to be psychic? I was so terrified that they would take away everything I'd worked for on the assumption that patients weren't safe around me. Having to hide this part of myself, this not normal part, created a deep ache at the base of my heart. I felt alone, and that hurts. It's a feeling many of you have probably felt before. When I couldn't connect with the people around me, it was the patients that helped me. Because no matter how vulnerable and not normal they felt, they still had the courage to share their stories. In fact, after hearing the stories of thousands of patients with not normal brains, I couldn't deny anymore that I might be able to do some good by doing the very, very, very scary thing of sharing my secret that I'm definitely not normal. Sure, normal can feel safer, more predictable, more comfortable. But that shouldn't mean that by default, normal is better. And neither is normal a requirement to be a worthy human being. If you want to see real evidence of this, just look to your favorite piece of art or technology, your favorite song. People who are not normal include celebrities with synesthesia, like Billy Joel, Lord, Pharrell, who gave us all the gift of happy. <laughs> Even the Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman. Could you imagine what would have happened if all these people had instead decided to hide themselves, to avoid being labeled not normal? How many other ways can we be normal or not normal? Steve Jobs was adopted. Anderson Cooper has dyslexia. Justin Timberlake has ADHD and OCD. Emma Stone, panic attacks. Beyonce, Adele, J.K. Rowling, depression. Beethoven was deaf. Eddie Redmayne, Christopher Nolan, Mr. Rogers, all colorblind. Please raise your hand if you are left-handed. Wow, oh, look around. Put your hands down. Not that long ago, you'd be considered not just not normal, you'd be considered straight up evil. <laughs> But this is the kind of stuff we do. In someone else's eyes, you are not normal. Maybe because of your religion or spirituality or having none at all. Maybe you grew up on a farm when everyone else around you grew up in a city. Maybe you feel excluded because of your size, or your skin color, or your background, or how you dress, or who you love, or how you think, or how you talk, or how old or young you look. Maybe you feel left out because you're single, or maybe because you're married, or partnered but not married, or divorced, or widowed. Maybe you have too many children, or can't have children or don't want children. In someone else's eyes, you are not enough like them. Therefore, you are not normal. How much pain has been inflicted because of the label not normal? How many atrocities have been committed because someone does not fit in? We grow up teaching one another that the person who is more familiar, more typical, more 
like us is normal, then we call them good or beautiful or better or worthy of love and life. What I think it comes to is this. This labeling of normal and not normal gets in our way of connecting with each other and treating each other as part of the same species. It doesn't just weaken us. It can kill us. Which is why I'm here to say that this is not normal. I am not normal. And what I can also appreciate now is that there is no normal. Variation is the norm. Each of us is a different spin on one theme, human. And being open to our differences is not about highlighting our limitations. It's about reimagining human possibility. The problem is not our differences. The problem is how we think about our differences. Please, find your heart with your hand. And really connect with your heartbeat. At this moment, even if it's just for now, seeing you, this is what I feel. I wish you could experience it too. The depth of love and connection in this room is incredible. And it fills me with hope. My hope is that we will have the courage to appreciate our differences just as we appreciate our similarities. And then harness those differences and use them for something good. Thank you very much.